Next story about overcoming adversity is really one of my favorites. And when I think of, when I think of being a leader or leading an organization, and I think anybody here would agree with me, that it's almost impossible to think of yourself as leading an organization without at some point in your tenure as a leader having to face some type of adversity, some type of challenge that you've got to lead the organization through. And that's true whether it's a business, whether it's a military organization, whether it's a family. Everybody faces some type of adversity that the leaders are called upon to motivate the organization to move through. My nephew, who went to Riverside High School, he was a music guy, he lives up in uh, northern Connecticut now, and he is a YMCA professional. He is a director at a YMCA camp up in northern Connecticut. The name of the camp is Camp Woodstock. Camp Woodstock is just gorgeous. Anybody ever been to Goose Pond? Yeah, if you have been to Goose Pond, I mean, it's in the Poconos, really nice Boy Scout camp. Camp Woodstock is very similar. It's on a lake, pine trees, pristine woods, forest in northern Connecticut. I've been up there to visit them many times, and I always enjoy my time up there. This Camp Woodstock was founded in 1922, and uh, you know, they would bring you know, the youth from the region through, through the camp. In 1937, there was a terrible storm that raged up the East Coast. It was a hurricane, and it devastated many areas on the East Coast, including Camp Woodstock. This hurricane came through. It destroyed every standing structure at Camp Woodstock and took hundreds of the pine trees and just caused them to topple over. And so the board of directors at Camp Woodstock, 1937, decided they needed to meet to decide what they were going to do with this camp. So two weeks after the storm, they had a meeting, and there was one, there was one uh, agenda item on the itinerary that evening. And that ag agenda item went something like this. Should we go on or not? And so the people from the board stood up, and almost everybody on the board had their remarks about why the camp should not go on. It was 1937. There were still in the Depression, just starting to come out of the Depression. Businesses weren't doing too good in the area. Who was going to donate the money to rebuild the structures? On and on and on about why the camp could not go on. The camp director was the last man to speak, and his name was Pop Thenus. And Pop Thenus stood up, and he said, we're asking the wrong question. We have the wrong question on our, on our itinerary. He said, we've been asking, should we go on or not? He said, the only question we should be asking is, how do we go on? And then he went on to talk about Europe, and he talked about the evil that was spreading over Europe in 1937 in the embodiment of, of Adolf Hitler. And he said, if there was ever a time when we need to bring young American children in the Camp Woodstock to learn the YMCA values, of, of caring, responsibility, respect. He said, the time is now. If, if we didn't need this camp any other time, this is the time we need the camp because of the hate that's spreading all over the world. And so the board got inspired. They were able to raise a whopping $4,000. Now, even in 1937, $4,000 was not enough money to rebuild that camp. So this is what they did. They bought a portable sawmill. They took those pine trees that had been knocked down and other trees that had been knocked down through the course of that storm, and they transformed those trees into lumber. And I visited, I, I visited Anthony's camp every, every year. And I remember the first time I was there several years ago when he first became the camp director, I was standing in front of the centerpiece lodge in the middle of that camp and I was reading the story about Pop Venus. And that very structure I was standing in was rebuilt by lumber from the trees that were knocked down during that storm. So I think that's just a perfect story of how a leader like Pop Venus motivated the other people on the board of directors 
to overcome the challenges that they had, financial challenges and the financials brought on by the storm in 1937 to rebuild that camp. That camp reopened again in 1939, and it's functioning to this day. Think of the hundreds, think of the thousands, the tens of thousands of young boys and girls who have gone to that camp who have learned those very important YMC values and continue to do that to right now. If it wasn't for a guy like Pop Thenis, all those children between 1939 when the camp reopened and 2019 when the last time they had their, their camp functioning, it's going to function again this year, all those young people that went through and had the just, just the opportunity to do, you know, just wholesome things at that camp and learn those YMC values. So I think that's a perfect story of how one person is able to motivate others to overcome adversity.